Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Elena Gross, the neuroscientist, PhD in clinical research founder of Keto Swiss. Today we'll learn why the brain is so vulnerable and particularly vulnerable of energy shortcomings. You will learn about the link between hypoglycemia and migraine, which has been there for over a century. You will learn how biochemical studies, neuroimaging studies have linked metabolism with migraine and also learn how all trigger factors or most migraine trigger factors can be connected to an increase in oxidative stress and or an energy deficit and how many of the common migraine therapeutics are actually also tied to influencing energy metabolism one form or another even if they're not designed to do that. The human brain is completely astonishing to me. It makes us who we are, not only as an individual, but also as a species, whether we're human or a bird, is largely also determined by our brain. The brain is responsible for all movements, orchestrates all movements, thoughts, behavior, emotion. It's the seat of intelligence. It's responsible for innovation, creativity, even love, dreams, hope, and so much more. And even from a metabolic standpoint, the brain is very interesting. Even though it only makes up 2% of our total body mass, it consumes over 25% of our metabolic rate, of our energy resources, even at rest. And this is called the resting metabolic rate. In a child, this ratio goes up in a newborn baby. This ratio is goes up to 75% of energy demands go towards the brain. But it's the most energy hungry organ of the body, but it cannot really store energy very well, which is why the brain is completely dependent on the rest of the body for its energy demand. And uh, that is called the circulation. So a bit like a laptop, without a battery, it quickly dies once it's unplugged. Another challenge for the brain's energy demands is that it's actually protected by something known as the blood-brain barrier, which you might have heard about before. It's that connective tissue, that protective tissue around your brain that protects us from bad substances or toxins coming into your brain. This excludes the passage of also large energy-dense molecules such as fatty acids larger fatty acids that other organs of the body can feast off. This basically means that only three molecules can feed the brain, which is lactate. You probably know that from exercise, it's produced in muscle cells and, and other tissues when there's a lot of anaerobic stress or metabolism going on. The second is glucose. You already know about this. We've talked about it. Simple sugar. And the third one is ketone bodies, which you will learn much more about in separate videos. low blood glucose, so anything under 3.9 millimol per liter is defined as hypoglycemia and that has been associated with migraine for over a century, it just has been forgotten in the meantime. And if you compare the symptoms that we know are um, part of hypoglycemia with the symptoms that a migraine experiences during the premonitory phase, you know, the first phase of the migraine attack that we have already talked about that can precede the pain phase by up to 12 hours, we can see several similarities. For example, dizziness, pale skin, coldness, cold hands and feet, binge eating, yawning, a shaking, low blood sugar, cravings, nausea, um, and, and more, cognitive difficulties, of course, tiredness, fatigue, visual dysfunction, and even slurred speech. All of these happen during events of hypoglycemia and also during the premonitory phase in a migraine attack. And these symptoms can be due to insufficient supply of glucose, but also due to the excretion of excitatory neurotransmitters that are responsible for the fight and flight response that you might have heard of. There are actually quite a large number of studies, biochemical studies, that show or point towards migraine being also a metabolic disease. For example, uh, neuroimaging studies. There's something called phosphorus MRS, phosphorus magnetic resonance spectroscopy, that allows us to actually measure ATP levels in the brain. And these studies have shown, or well, there's a study that has shown that even between attacks in migraineurs without aura, a 16% decrease in ATP, the energy currency, in the migraineurs' brain, even outside of an attack, 
So one can only imagine what the energy deficiency would be in a migraine's brain during a migraine attack. Unfortunately, that study hasn't been done for probably the reason that most migraines in a severe attack are not quite reluctant to be put into a loud and noisy neuroimaging scanner. So this finding also supports that hypothesis that migraine could be a mismatch between energy availability on the one side and energy utilization on the other side. Those two together are really at the cornerstone of migraine pathophysiology. So in short, the brain is hungry, but there's not enough food in the cupboard. There's quite some strong evidence that, for example, riboflavin, vitamin B2 is helping, other B vitamins, there's magnesium, there's L-carnitine, which, which helps shuttling in fatty acids into the mitochondria and into the cells, uh, magnesium, which is involved in over 300 enzymatic reactions. There's alpha lipoic acid, which is a very strong antioxidant, as well as coenzyme Q10, which is involved in energy metabolism and is also an antioxidant, and um, other B vitamins. So there's quite a large variety of different substances that are helpful. Also potentially ketone bodies, which are all of the above, involved in energy metabolism. They're macro molecules, so they can be providing you with energy, but they're also signaling molecules, antioxidants, uh, and more. Most migraine trigger factors can also be connected to energy metabolism and it's especially via increasing oxidative stress. You know, oxidative stress are these free radicals, these little bombs that bump around and wreck over anything that they touch and bump into. So really for longevity and general health span, what we want to do is always try and keep those little bombs at bay and try find to neutralize them. Me especially, I've been born with uh, unfortunate genetic mutations or variations where I can't make those enzymes, good enough enzymes to neutralize these free radicals. So I have to be particularly careful because at the moment, unfortunately, I can't CRISPR cuss uh, those, uh, those genes into my genome that's in the future. So for now, I really have to deal and try and mitigate oxidative stress through my environment. And um, really, if some of the trigger factors that I'm just going to mention resonate with you and are also in an influence impacting your migraines or migraine threshold, then it may be thinking about reducing oxidative stress overall, which you will learn about more in another video to come. So exercise, especially high duration or high intensity, really increases oxidative stress. Omitting a meal, having irregular meals, also leads to hyperglycemia and uh, energy deficiency in the brain, sometimes, if you're not fat adapted, that is. Irregular drinking can impair energy metabolism and energy production in the mitochondria as a consequence. Then alcohol, and alcohol very much increases oxidative stress and at the same time indirectly limits gluconeogenesis, which is the building of new um, glucose in the liver, because it, the liver has a hierarchy of things to do and the hierarchy always includes getting rid of toxins like alcohol first and then producing ketone bodies or glucose or energy substrate after, which is why you should always drink after having had a meal so that that doesn't happen. If you're a migraineer and you have had alcohol, make sure to have a snack before you go to bed because otherwise you'll probably also wake up with a migraine. The stress we talked about, stress, physical, psychological stress, also increases free radicals, which again impairs energy production. Then we have irregular day and night rhythm. This upsets hormones and hence also energy production and energy availability via disturbing your circadian rhythm, your daily rhythm. Then we have high sugar or high carbohydrate consumption also increases oxidative stress um, when, it's, when those are accumulating or burned in the mitochondria and it can also lead to subsequent glucose drop, hypoglycemia, which again can trigger a migraine. Menstruation is also an interesting one. Estrogen and progesterone, our, our female hormones, are actually very protective antioxidative molecules. When they drop towards the menses, this can also lead to a lack of protection and your migraine threshold can just go down during that time. Then we have intense sensory stimuli and this includes odorants. Odorants often contain toxins and they can impair mitochondrial functioning and also light um, sensory stimulus. Bright blue lights or white lights can also increase oxidative stress in the retina or other tissues and thereby disturb mitochondrial functioning. 
Last two is hypoxia. Hypoxia, for example, altitude causes migraine, low oxygen. We need oxygen to provide, to make cells of energy in our mitochondria. So this can impair mitochondrial functioning as well. And low air pressure. Some of you get migraine when the weather changes. One of the reasons here could be low air pressure because that partially limits the production of energy because there's less oxygen in the air if the pressure changes. And otherwise, extreme hot or cold environments uh, conditions also stress the body, which can facilitate migraine generation. In this video, we have learned why the brain is in particularly so vulnerable to energy, potential energy shortcomings, how we can slightly overcome those energy shortcomings, how migraine trigger factors can be tied to oxidative stress and or energy gap, how most migraine therapeutics can be tied to energy metabolism, and how other evidence, biochemical studies or um, therapeutic studies, neuroimaging studies have shown that migraine can be connected or lots of migraine pathophysiology can be connected to metabolism as well. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Elena Groß, a neuroscientist, PhD in clinical research, owner of Kilosus.